Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Completionist. For this episode, guys, I'm going to keep my promise, and uh, this is a video that I was going to plan to do when, when I did my update video back in the December. And uh, what this uh, video is going to uh, entail is, uh, you know, there have been a run of videos, you know, on YouTube lately about people... Uh, making videos about some of the cool uh, video game items that they own and usually you know the, uh, the the title of the video is you know cool gaming shit that I own but I wasn't really fond of that title and uh, this kind of video I don't want it to come across as like me bragging about things that I own that other people have you know I don't like that kind of mentality and uh, and the items that I'm going to show to you today are like items that gamers may consider rare or valuable or may associate a high monetary cost to it. But, uh, but the biggest similarity that all these items have in common is that these are all items that have a sentimental value to me. Uh, they're not dictated by its rarity or by its cost or like anything along those lines and uh, and there is a specific reason uh, why I have each and every one of these items that I'm actually uh, going to show you um, because for anyone that's uh, that's watched my uh, channel uh, they know that I'm very selective when it comes to owning uh, specific uh, video game items and despite my video video game collection being a little on the massive side, uh, I don't really have a lot of space when it comes to collecting uh, different kinds of video game collectibles, and that's why I'm very selective over the things that I uh, that I do collect for. So, uh, so what I have here, guys, is I have uh, you know uh, uh, vinyl records, art books, uh, soundtracks, action figures. And I'll take you to a few locations around my house where, uh, where some of my most uh, sentimental uh, video game collectibles are. But I just wanted to take this video and, uh, and basically uh, tell you why uh, these, uh, these video game collectibles have a lot of sentimental value to me. And a lot of them uh, have, a, uh, have a bit of a story to it. So if this uh, video goes uh, goes a little long, you know, I uh, humbly apologize for that. So instead of uh, saying that this is cool gaming shit that I own, I'm going to take Hybrid Angel Zero's advice and just say that these are some of my favorite uh, video game collectibles. So anyway, guys, the, uh, the first bunch of items that I have are... Uh, uh, I do have some uh, video game-based uh, action figures, but... I am very selective, you know, over over what I collect. It has to be something that I absolutely love because there are a lot of things video game related that I actually like, but just because of space issues, you know, I I only collect things that like I absolutely love. And uh, obviously, these three action figures are all from anime style games, which which are the games that that I prefer to play. So, and all of them have a little story to it. Um, now, the first figure on my right here is uh, my favorite uh, uh, JRPG villain of all time. Um, just spoiler alert, um, he is a character in Valkyrie Profile 1, but uh, he is actually the main villain in Valkyrie Pro Profile 2, and that's uh, Lazard Valif. Uh, he is actually my favorite uh, RPG villain, and I think one of the reasons why is because the guy who does the English voice of this character, uh, I think his name is Liam O'Brien, uh, he just does an incredible job of voicing this character, and he sells the route the role so well. And uh, a lot of people don't really like Valkyrie Profile 2, but uh, Valkyrie Profile 2 actually has some of my favorite uh, attack animations of any RPG that I've ever played. And, uh, and I just like this character just because, you know, mainly because of his voice, like the voice actor that they got for him was just truly wonderful, how he chants some of his spells, you know, he's completely fixated on, the, on, one, of the, um, on one of the Valkyries in Valkyrie Profile 2, and he is just literally controlled through power and, th and through lust, and he's a very maniacal villain. And, uh, and because of that, he is my favorite uh, RPG villain of all time. 
And you know, I hope to eventually uh, meet uh, Liam O'Brien because uh, because I would love to have this little figure uh, uh, signed by him because. Uh, I don't think I would have loved this character as much if it wasn't for that voice actor uh, 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 doing d doing a role for this character. Now I do have uh, other uh, Valkyrie profile characters as well, uh, but uh, I don't have the full set. I'm still missing uh, Lenneth, and I'm still missing the uh, uh, I forget Buddy's name, but he has the uh, the long uh, bastard sword. So so I still need to get those two characters in order to finish this set, but. Uh, uh, to, to get an action figure of uh, my favorite uh, RPG villain of all time, I definitely had to pick it up uh, for myself. So the second character we have, guys, is uh, Hinata from uh, Rival Schools and Project Justice. Uh, she's one of my uh, favorite uh, uh, video game characters with regards to fighting games. Um, and she was from the Capcom Queens line which had a bunch of female characters, you know, from, uh, from various Street Fighter games and uh, rival schools. And she's literally one of my top two uh, favorite uh, video game uh, uh, characters to use. Anyone who's watched my channel, you know that, uh, uh, you know that Rival Schools and Project Justice is my favorite uh, video game uh, fighting series, and she is my favorite character. So uh, I actually uh, seen her for sale at the at the local comic book shop, and uh, and I just absolutely love uh, love this character. Every time I play Rival Schools or Project Justice, she's she, she is my main. She is the character that uh, that I love the most. Um, so I definitely had to uh, to pick this up. You know, it's not really much of a story. It's just you know like. I have very few video game characters that, that I consider my absolute favorites, but if they do release an action figure of one of my favorite characters from video games, I, um, I will pick it up. And one thing I just wanted to make note of, guys, before I, uh, before I move on to the next character, uh, ac sorry, the next action figure, is that uh, uh, if you watch any of my earlier videos and you've seen uh, uh, like the, the video of my game wall, uh, you know, originally I had a lot of these uh, action figures, you know, still sealed, you know, in their box. But, you know, about a year ago, about a year and a half ago, you know, I kind of had a revelation. And I, and I just said, you know, because, like anyone who knows me, you know, I have a problem with people who keep things sealed and stuff like that. And at the end of the day, it's your own individual preference, but, but personally... You know, you know, I bought these things so, you know, that, you know, I could own them, I could enjoy them, and things along those lines. So what I did is I pretty much took every action figure that, that I had and I just opened the box and I threw it away. Because at the end of the day, fuck monetary value. Um, you know, I've, I bought these figures not for, for them to be collectibles that, you know, I can sell later on. You know, I did buy these because, you know, I actually want to enjoy them and showcase them and uh, because they really do uh, do mean a lot to me. So anyway, that's Hinata. Incredibly posable. So, and she's held up by this little thing there, so I think she's gonna fall. Okay, she's good. Alright, so the next character we have is uh, Cosmos from uh, Xenosaga Episode 1. This was actually uh, one of the first uh, uh, Christmas gifts that my wife actually bought for me. Uh, I do enjoy the Xenosaga series, even though I've only played the first two games in the series. I haven't played the third one yet. And uh, I really enjoy the first game. I really love it. It has one of my favorite RPG battle themes of all time. Uh, but there isn't really a lot of Xenoga uh, Xenosaga based merchandise. But uh, Cosmos is not even my... Uh, my favorite character from from the Xenosaga series. Uh, that's uh, she uh, Chaos and uh, Shiana are my two favorite characters from that series. But uh, this was one of the first things that you know my wife actually uh, bought for me when 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 we were dating long before uh, we were engaged or you know even married. And uh, and she had to and this was an um, I I'm not sure if this was an import or not or if she got this at um, at, a, at our local comic book store. But uh, it comes from a very beloved uh, JRPG series, and it's something that uh, that you know that I kept sealed for the longest time. But you know, when I was reorganizing my game wall, I just said, "Listen, there's there's really no point for me to keep this in its original uh, case anymore." So I decided to take it out 
and it looks uh, absolutely beautiful. And it is uh, based on her uh, on her uh, uh, Xenosaga Episode One design. So it's just a uh, it's just a beautiful uh, action figure from a very uh, wonderful uh, JRPG series. And hopefully, when I get more free time, I can actually uh, I can actually get the Xenosaga Episode Three finished and uh, completed for good. So. All right, guys. The next items that we have are uh, soundtracks, and uh, uh, one soundtrack is one that I bought for myself, and the other soundtrack is one that I actually bought for my wife. But uh, thankfully, uh, being with someone that shares a lot of the same interests you, uh, you have, you know, technically items we we get for each other are uh, are kind of shared items because we have a shared interest in it, and the. Uh, I don't own that many video game soundtracks, um, actual officially licensed ones, you know, from, uh, from Japan. I do have a lot of soundtracks that come from collector's editions of various games, especially over the last couple of years. But uh, these were uh, CD soundtracks that I absolutely wanted to pick up, and, and they are my two favorite uh, video game soundtracks of all time. And uh, my favorite video game soundtrack of all time is uh, Chrono Cross. And this is the Chrono Cross original soundtrack. And my second favorite video game soundtrack of all time is the uh, Xenogears original soundtrack. Both music uh, composed by Yasunori Mitsuda. And uh, will probably always remain my favorite uh, video game soundtracks of all time. But even despite Xenogears being my, uh, being my favorite uh, video game of all time, I do believe that Chrono Cross has the, uh, has the superior soundtrack. But it's just a matter of uh, personal taste, and uh, and as we all know, taste is subjective in the grand scheme of things. The uh, the key thing when it comes to video game uh, soundtracks is that there are a lot of fakes out there, but uh, there is a website uh, out there called the uh, the VGMDB, the Video Game Music Database, and uh, when you uh, when you buy video game soundtracks, always check the side labels and check the codes right here and see if they match up with the codes on the uh, VG, uh, video game music database. And uh, they will tell you if it's an actual authentic copy or if it's a, a fake. So, you know, with, with these two games having my favorite soundtracks of all time, it was only natural that, you know, I had to, uh, I had to, um, to, to get, get the actual licensed versions of, you know, each, uh, each of those soundtracks. And I do go back and uh, listen to these soundtracks uh, quite a lot because uh, Yasunori Mitsuda is my favorite video game composer and, and the music from these two uh, games is just absolutely wonderful. And uh, I don't think that the games would have been as strong if they didn't have these uh, wonderful, masterful soundtracks associated with them. So these will always have a huge uh, sentimental value to me uh, just because of the beautiful music that's contained in, the, in each of these discs. So, that takes care of the soundtracks right there. Now, uh, the next item are actually video game comic books. Um, but I don't have very many of them, so it has to be something incredibly special from a video game that I absolutely love in order for me to, uh, to buy a uh, comic book from a, uh, from a specific video game series. I actually came across these comic books completely by accident at our local uh, comic book store. Uh, I had uh, no idea that, uh, that they were actually released. So when I seen them, and it did come from one of my uh, favorite video games of all time, uh, I absolutely had to uh, pick them up. Uh, there are, uh, there's only two physical comic books of this uh, series, and they have uh, two different uh, um, uh, cover art variants. So I only have two out of the four, and uh, but I will eventually uh, pick up the uh, other two because it does uh, it does come from my favorite uh, one of my favorite uh, video game series of all time. And if you're wondering what that video game series is, is that it is actually the Rival Schools comic book, United by Fate by Udon Comics. And uh, this one is the uh, first artwork variant of the first issue, 1A. There is a 1B. 
and uh, and we also have two uh, B, the uh, the second physical comic book. I still need to get two A. Uh, there isn't a lot of Rival Schools merchandise out there, especially especially released in North America and and especially in English. So the moment I had to get these, uh, so the moment I seen these comic books, I absolutely had to get them. Uh, supposedly, uh, the comic book does continue, but uh, but it is only available uh, digitally on the uh, on on the Udon Comics uh, website. As far as I know, I haven't really looked uh, that far d deep into it, so I just need two more comics to like finish this collection. But uh, but to have a comic book of you know one of my favorite uh, video game series, you know, I absolutely had to pick it up and you know add it to the collection because. You know, it's a great fighting game series. I would highly recommend it to uh, to everybody. Um, and and you know, I would love to see a third um, a third game in the series. Um, you know, after Project Justice, but uh, I think this game series has more of a cult class, uh, cult status right now, and I don't think a lot of people know about it. But it is truly a a, a wonderful fighting game series. So, if you get a chance to uh, to find it, you know, if if you go to a game store, if you're doing doing the flea market scene or you know the thrift store scene, uh, be sure to pick it up because it is truly a a, a wonderful game, and I'm just happy to to have the comics for it. So, all right. So the next gift that I have is uh, sorry, not gift, but. Uh, but the, uh, the, the next uh, video game collectible I have, it was a gift uh, from my Secret Santa on my local uh, gaming forum. And uh, I, you know, I t totally did not expect he was going to get me this. And it is one of uh, my favorite art books that, that I ever owned, despite I haven't even played one game from this series. Which is kind of funny, but the art in this book is absolutely beautiful and uh, the fact that you know a guy that I had only met in person once uh, you know he he lives out in Vancouver and his name is Paulo and uh, and the fact that uh, that he bought this and and sent it to me as a secret Santa gift I'll forever be grateful for it because I just absolutely love the uh, the artwork in this book and it just makes me really excited to uh, to start playing games in this series when I have the free time to uh, do so. So what the art book is, I'm going to probably butcher this person's name, but it is the Shigenori Soejima uh, Artworks 2004 to 2010. And it creates and it has a whole ton of art book from various Persona games and Stella Deus and Momo Iro Tyson Paran, and an exclusive interview with with the artist himself, and the artwork in this in this book is absolutely incredibly beautiful, especially as uh, some of the art from Persona Three and Persona Four, and uh, one of my favorite uh, voice actresses, uh, she does the voice of uh, Chie in uh, Persona Four, and uh, she actually came to this province twice, but. Uh, but, but I didn't have a chance to meet her because I was still working away at home. Sorry, working away out in Alberta at the time. And uh, if I ever get, get a chance to meet her, and her name is Erin uh, Fitzgerald, I would love to get her to sign a, a picture in this book uh, of her character because uh, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I don't know. Uh, let me see if I can just find it there for you. It might be a little hard. Where are you? Persona 3 section. There it is. So it's a Chie in a kim uh, kimono. I think it's, yeah, it's this picture right here. I, uh, I hope to meet Aaron Fitzgerald one of those days, and I would love to get, a, I get her to sign, the, sign that picture. But uh, despite the beautiful artwork that's, a, that's in this book, um, I still haven't had a chance to play any of the Persona games. Um, but I will because you know I do own all of them, and and I will be picking up uh, Persona Five when it, when it gets uh, released. But uh, you just know how it goes, guys. When it comes to my work situation, I just don't don't have a lot of uh, a lot of free time to play as many games as as what what I would like. But I really appreciate Paulo for uh, 
for sending me that art book because it's a very beautiful art book. Now, all right, guys, the next item I have uh, shouldn't be much of a surprise to anybody because every, everybody knows that uh, Xenogears is my favorite game of all time. And if you collect any kind of Xenogears merchandise, this should be one of the first things that you should go out and get for, for yourself. Uh, this was, I think, the first, uh, the first Christmas gift I think my wife ever uh, bought for me. And uh, she had to buy it from Japan because uh, it's an import. And, uh, and I just absolutely adore this. And uh, I really love this book and it is the Xenogears Perfect Works. And this is a humongous book that was released after, after Xenogears was made. And it shows a ton of different artwork for the characters, for the mechs in the game, for, for the ship designs. It, e it even goes into more detail about the, uh, about the plot of Xenogears, about some of the mythology of Xenogears. And, uh, and originally this book was very hard, uh, hard to find when she bought it for me. Uh, I think it was in 2004, 2005 when she, uh, when she got it for me. And, and this is the first printing. Now, this book has recently been re-released, so, so it's a little easier to find. You can find plenty of copies of it on, uh, on eBay. Uh, the thing is, is that uh, the entire book is in Japanese. There's, uh, there's very little English in it. And, uh, but thankfully, uh, somebody on the internet, I forget the website, but uh, had translated the entire thing. So, uh, so if you're wondering, uh, you know, so, some of the mythology or like anything along those lines when it comes to uh, Xenogears, uh, you can definitely look up a translation for this book. But like for, for anyone that, that loves you know, um, Xenogears, uh, this book should be in your collection if you love the game as much as I do. And uh, I really appreciate my wife for actually uh, uh, buying this for me because it uh because it was the uh it was one of the first import items she ever bought for me and i'm forever grateful that you know she uh, she got me this this beautiful book for a game that i absolutely love so much so if any of you are on my facebook um you know one of the gifts that i probably got for uh, for this christmas or sorry last christmas a lot of people, uh, and a lot of gamers, you know, in in particular, have an item that you know they often consider, you know, their their holy grail. You know, an item that's probably very obscure, very hard to find, or could be something that has a tremendous amount of sentimental value uh, to them. Uh, I had first heard about this item uh, quite a few years ago, but it was. It didn't have a big release. From my knowledge that I've done on this particular item, this item could only be uh, picked up at the uh, Square Enix store in, in Japan. Or uh, because this is an import item, but a lot of them weren't, uh, weren't made. And uh, the moment that I found out that this item had been made, I absolutely wanted it. I knew it was going to be expensive. I knew it was going to be hard to find. Um, I searched eBay at least once a month, waiting for this to come up, because this item sold out incredibly quickly. You couldn't find it anywhere. It had a very low print run, and uh, for a while I kind of lost hope that you know I was never going to find it. And it is another uh, uh, Xenogears related item. And uh, I'm just happy that, you know, I actually have it. Because uh, back uh, during the spring, uh, one actually came up online, being sold out in Europe, of all places. And it had a very hefty price tag. And as far as I know, only two of these things have ever appeared on eBay. And uh, despite the high price tag, you know, I saved my money for it because this was something that I absolutely wanted and I didn't know if I was going to get another opportunity, you know, to own it again. And, you know, I told my wife about it because, you know, she's the one with the eBay account. And I told her, listen, if you pick this up for me, you don't have to buy me anything else for, uh, for Christmas. This, this can be my Christmas gift because I'm kind of desperate for a new laptop right now. The, uh, the laptop I have is probably going on 
five, six years old, maybe, maybe a little older. And uh, I weighed and she told me, well, you know, you can either get one, you know, do you want a brand new laptop or do you want this item? And I told her, you know, this item because I never, because I'll never know when another one might pop up again. So I wanted to, to take full advantage of, of trying to get it because I didn't know if, if other people were, were looking to get it as, uh, as much as I do. And what it is, is it is MIF, the Xenogears Orchestral Album. Because uh, for anyone that's watched my channel, uh, you know that, uh, that, that my two main hobbies are, you know, collecting video games and collecting uh, cartoons that I grew up as a kid. Um, um, I have quite an extension, um, sorry, extensive uh, collection of 80s to 90s cartoons and things along those lines. And, but another kind of hobby that, that my wife and I have, even though my wife's more into this hobby than I am, is that we actually collect vinyl records. And there's just a sound quality that you get out of vinyl that just can't be replicated. You, you can't get out of a CD or, you know, out of music digitally or, you know, a cassette tape or, you know, anything along those lines. So to have one of my favorite video game soundtracks on vinyl, is uh, just an amazing feeling because this is my second favorite video game soundtrack of all time and even though this vinyl album only has six songs they are all orchestral versions of some of the best songs in the entire Xenogears soundtrack and I have been looking for this for a very long time and I won't get into details guys about how much it cost me if you know, if you want to just look up Xenogears vinyl and look up completed listings and, and you'll see how much my wife paid for it. But this is one of the things that I consider my holy grail. And it's not because of its price, it's not because of its rarity, it's just to have one of my favorite video game soundtracks on vinyl, which I would never think in a million years would ever happen. But now, thankfully, having video game music on vinyl is starting to gain in popularity, especially with that company releasing those vinyl records of, you know, uh, some 16-bit uh, some, uh, games, uh, you know, like uh, Streets of Rage, and, and I think they did one for, for Shenmue as well. And uh, I'm just happy to have this, because I've been looking for this for a very long time. And, uh, and you know, and as rare as this thing is, this record is going to get played on my record player. I've, I've already played it once, and it was just wonderful. It was wonderful. To, to listen to, to all the Xenogears orchestral music. And uh, I'm just glad uh, that I have it because this was my most desired video game collectible for a very long time. And for a while, I didn't think I would ever own it. I didn't think a copy of this would, would ever pop up on eBay. But, uh, but I'm glad that I have it and it has a very special sentimental place in my uh, video game collection.